Hey, I'm Mechanical Ninja Nier, and this is my walking robot. Today we'll be building our own walking robot. Although this robot is not very complicated, it's super fun to build and even more fun to play with. Something I love about it is how it almost never gets stuck. It'll bump into things, but it turns and pivots, and it's just a lot of fun to watch. But more on that at the end. For now, let's get started on how to build it. So to begin, we're going to want to start by constructing the actual center frame of the robot itself. To do this, I'm going to want to cut out four three-quarter inch wide strips of plastic. I'm going to want the two sides to be three and one quarter inch long, the bottom to be one and three quarter inch long, and the top to be two and three quarter inch long. That way, when you put it all together, it'll look something like this. But don't put the other just yet because first, we have to drill a few holes into the side plates. We're going to want to drill a one eighth hole on each side plate three quarters inches up from the bottom and another eighth of an inch sized hole two and one quarters up from the bottom. Just like this. Now we can go ahead and glue them together into a T-shape like I showed you earlier. Like so. Next, we're going to want to take a small plastic gear, mine is 5 eighths of an inch tall with 30 teeth on it, and a 2 inch long metal pin that fits perfectly into the bottom holes, and put it all together. We'll slide the pin into one hole, slide the gear onto the pin, then slide the pin into the other hole. Now we'll just center the pin in place, slide the gear all the way to the right, then glue the gear to the pin. After that, I'm going to slide on two small washers to each side of the pin, then take these two tiny pieces that have two eighth of an inch sized holes drilled a quarter inch apart. Insert then glue down a half inch long pin into one of each of the plastic pieces holes. Then mount and glue them onto the main pin 120 degrees from each other. Just like this. Now to finish the gearbox, I'm going to take this 600 RPM motor and glue on an 18 tooth gear onto it. Then hot glue the motor beneath the pin in such a way that the two gears make contact. That works pretty well. Next up we have the top holes. Now lucky for us the top holes are remarkably simpler than the bottom ones. All we want to do is insert a 3 quarter inch long pin into each hole and glue it in place. As you can see I'm using a box nail that I cut down and that's only because the head of it will give us a larger gluing surface. Awesome and with that we are now ready to start on the legs. For the legs, I'm once again going to take two 3 quarter inch wide pieces and cut them down till they're 4 inches tall. I'm then going to drill an eighth of an inch sized hole, 1 and 3 quarters inches up from the bottom, and cut an inch long channel a little under a quarter inch from the top. The best way to do this is to take our 1 8 inch drill bit and drill a hole at each end of the 1 inch mark, then cut out the middle section using a vise and a coping saw. I'm now going to go ahead and round off these top corners, maybe even cutting into the top of the channel itself, so that we're left with as little bit of material as possible. Once you're done, it should look something like these. Now in case you're wondering, the function behind these is once you drop them onto the two outer pins and connect the motor to a battery, the plastic leg will move up and down, swinging in and out, resembling a walking motion. But before we can attach these legs and watch the robot walk for real, we first have to build the feet. To do this, we're just going to very simply take two 2 inch square pieces and cut them into a C-like design, making sure that the frame of the C, especially the front and back sides, are as thin as possible. Like this. We'll then glue the legs onto the center of them, gluing a tiny right triangle at each inside joint to increase support. Perfect. And with that, we are now finally ready to attach the legs. Here I have four metal washers that loosely fit on top of the pins, and here I have six thicker washers that I cut out of plastic that fit snugly over the pins. So I'm going to slide two metal washers on each side of the bottom pins. And then slide a plastic washer onto each top pin that matches the depth of the bottom metal washers, then glue the plastic washers in place. After that, we'll just pop on the legs, making sure the C's are pointed inward, then cap off the pins with the remaining plastic washers, making sure to glue them in place. It looks good. Let's hook it up to a battery and see if it works. Not too bad. With that, the mainframe of the robot is now complete and it is time to make it look more robot -y. 
So first, I'm going to glue on this front plate to, you guessed it, the front of the robot. I'm then going to take this face I made, it's just a piece of plastic on a stand with two little LEDs glued on it, and mount it to the top of the robot. Look at that thing, kinda looks like E.T. After that, I'm just going to take one more tiny little piece of plastic and glue it like a shelf above the gears to help protect them. Like so. And with that, we can now finally wire this sucker up. So I'm going to solder the two LEDs together, negative to negative, positive to positive and solder a 2.2 ohm resistor to the positive wires. Next, we'll run two new wires, one to connect the negative of the motor to the negative LEDs and the other to the positive. Then we'll take a switch and solder one of the leads onto an exposed positive joint. Solder on the positive end of a nine volt connector to the other end of the switch. Then solder on the remaining negative end of the connector onto an exposed negative joint. We well, really should have used heat shrink on these joints, but oh well, I'll just wrap them with some electrical tape. Now all that's left to do is to hot glue the wires in place along the sides, plug in a 9 volt, I'm going to be using double sided tape to hold it in place, then test it. Or if you're like me, decorate it and give it a little bit more personality first, then test it. That's just a bit creepy, Rob. Back off. As I'm sure you've already seen, I made the feet a little wider by gluing on a thin plastic piece to help increase stability. <sighs> Rob, don't do it. Don't do it, Rob. Don't do it. We love you. Rob, don't do it. Oh my land. thing seems to be pretty well balanced. I love how it almost never gets stuck. It'll just bump into things and twist and turn and move around them. It's almost like it has its own mind, like you'd expect from a robot. And like I said towards the beginning of the video, although it cannot do a whole lot of different things, it is a lot of fun to build it and for some reason, even more fun to watch it walk. And so there you have it, hell build a walking robot. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And Lord join, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And please feel free to subscribe.